on World News tonight. Safety insured. Japan comes worries of the global public about the wastewater release. Hurricane havoc. Tropical storm Idalia threatens Florida's Gulf Coast with the hurricane alert being issued. Soccer scandals. A crisis in Spanish soccer triggers with the suspension and resignation of key authorities. Tantalizing tango. Couples display their tango talents at Buenos Aires as Tango World Championship takes stage. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening, you are joining us on World News. We start over in Japan where initial tests show that no detectable radioactivity has been found in the samples of seawater collected near the Fukushima power plant since Japan started to release the wastewater into the Pacific Ocean. Amid concerns over the discharge of Fukushima wastewater, test samples continue to show that the seawater near the Fukushima nuclear plant is safe. Japan's Environment Ministry announced on Sunday that tests conducted days after authorities began releasing treated wastewater into the Pacific Ocean did not show any radioactivity. The ministry's tests of samples from 11 points within 40 kilometers of the Fukushima plant showed that the low concentrations of tritium detected would not have any adverse impact on people or the environment. Japan began discharging wastewater from the Fukushima plant on Thursday, sparking anxiety across neighboring nations such as South Korea and China. Japan, however, has continuously emphasized that the water which has been diluted to remove almost all radioactive elements except for tritium is safe. Tritium, a radioactive element of hydrogen, can't be completely removed from the wastewater with the current technology, but it has been diluted to fall well within regulatory limits. An official from the ministry also said that it will publish test results each week for the next three months. South Korea's Oceans Ministry also conducted its own tests based on samples from 15 points in three areas of South Korea's waters just one day after the start of the discharge. The ministry announced on Sunday that the tests showed that radiation levels were well within the World Health Organization's basic standards for drinking water. The experts dispatched by South Korea to examine the discharge also arrived in Japan on Sunday. The three experts from the Korea Institute of Nuclear Safety plan to visit the Fukushima office of the International Atomic Energy Agency. This is part of the agreement made earlier between Seoul, Tokyo and the IAEA to dispatch South Korean experts to the IAEA office every two weeks to monitor the release of the wastewater. The South Korean government also emphasized that it will continue to be vigilant and ensure that the discharge of the nuclear wastewater remains safe. A hurricane watch has been issued for portions of Florida's Gulf Coast as the state braces for tropical storm Idalia, which is expected to strengthen to a hurricane. The hurricane watch stretches from Englewood to Indiana Pass, including Tampa Bay. In addition to the hurricane watch, a tropical storm watch has been issued for the Gulf Coast of Florida from Englewood to Chokoloski and the Dry Torgers. Tropical storm Idalia, which formed in the Caribbean Sea on Sunday, is expected to threaten Florida in the coming days as it strengthens into a hurricane. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis warned residents along the Gulf Coast to stay vigilant as the Dahlia's winds ramp up. It will become a hurricane uh, by late Tuesday afternoon. Landfall is currently expected along the Big Bend region on Wednesday, and it could arrive at the state of Florida as strong as a Category 2 hurricane. The U.S. National Hurricane Center said on Sunday that the storm is currently near the Yucatan Channel, about 80 miles northeast of Cozumel, Mexico. Jamie Rome, deputy director at the National Hurricane Center, urged residents in states north of Florida to be alert. After it moves over northern Florida, it moves up into the southeast United States or along the coast. And we really have to watch. You in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina really have to pay attention. If it's a little bit farther inland, uh, maybe weaker, a little bit farther offshore, maybe a little stronger. Adelia could cause life-threatening storm surge and flooding from heavy rains along parts of Florida's west coast and the Panhandle as early as Tuesday, the Miami-based weather forecasters said. 
Russian investigators say genetic tests have confirmed the death of Russian mercenary group leader Yevgeny Prigozhin. The Kremlin denies Western speculation that Russian President Vladimir Putin is behind the plane crash that he died in. Russia's investigators have confirmed that Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin died in a plane crash, completing the genetic tests on those on board the private jet that crashed last Wednesday. Russia's aviation agency concluded that Prigozhin and Dmitry Akin, his right hand man, were among those on board. As part of the investigation into the plane crash in the Tavir region, molecular genetic examinations have been completed. According to the results, the identities of all 10 dead were established. They correspond to the list stated on the flight sheet. The plane crash came two months after Prigozhin led a failed mutiny against the Russian army's top brass. Russian President Vladimir Putin initially vowed to crush mutiny, calling a stab in the back that could potentially trigger a civil war in Russia. But hours later, a deal came to allow Prigozhin to go into exile in Belarus. After the plane crash, Putin sent his condolences to the families of those who died. Meanwhile, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko, who brokered the exile deal, said on Friday that he warned Prigozhin to watch out for possible threats, and he insisted that Wagner fighters will remain in Belarus. But Prigozhin had twice dismissed the warnings. The second time when he visited me with Dima Utkin, I strongly warned them, lads, you watch out. However, Lukashenko said that he believed Putin had nothing to do with the plane crash. The Kremlin said on Friday that Western suggestions that Prigozhin had been killed on its orders were an absolute lie. As attorneys for former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and prosecutors with the Fulton County District Attorney's Office prepare to appear in court for the first federal hearing in the DA's sweeping racketeering case, attorneys and aides for former President Donald Trump and some of the other 17 defendants will be watching the proceedings closely. As former President Donald Trump remains defiant in the face of four criminal indictments, We did nothing wrong, I did nothing wrong. A high-stakes hearing is set for Fulton County, Georgia on Monday. Mark Meadows, Trump's former chief of staff, and one of 18 Trump associates charged in Fulton County for running what was akin to a criminal enterprise to conspire to steal the 2020 election, requesting his case be moved to federal court. District Attorney Fonnie Willis issuing subpoenas for elections investigator Francis Watson and Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to testify. Raffensperger is the Republican Secretary of State who took this call from Trump in the wake of the 2020 vote. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. The hearing will be the first opportunity to hear from some of these key witnesses in open court. If Meadows is successful moving the trial to federal court, it could have an impact on other defendants, including Trump himself. North Korea is finally allowing stranded citizens to return home more than three years after closing its borders in the coronavirus pandemic. The country's state emergency epidemic prevention headquarters said that the approval was in line with the East worldwide pandemic situation. North Korea says it's letting its citizens back in for the first time since the pandemic, following some four years of tight border controls. That's according to the North's official media who made the announcement Sunday. Pyongyang's epidemic prevention official said a day earlier the approval was in line with the quote, ease worldwide pandemic situation and added that returnees would be, quote, put under proper medical observation at quarantine wards for a week. The announcement appears to be the North's first public announcement of the policy change. It comes days after a flight from Pyongyang landed in Beijing for the first time since lockdowns began in 2020 that forced many foreign delegations to close their embassies in Pyongyang because they were unable to rotate staff or ship in supplies. Though it was not immediately clear who was aboard the flight, Western tour companies that operate in North Korea said it appeared to be a flight to shuttle North Koreans stuck in China for the past three years back home. North Korea's reopening has been one of the world's slowest. Though cargo, train and ship traffic has slowly increased over the past year, North Korea has only just begun to allow some international passenger travel. 
In a first since before the pandemic, Chinese and Russian government delegations flew to Pyongyang last month. And this month, buses carrying North Korean athletes to a Taekwondo tournament in Kazakhstan crossed the border into China. We'll be back with more world news of this short commercial break. Welcome back. Now we have some good news for you. The elderly population is growing very quickly. And with more elderly people living alone, the demand for care services is on the rise. And here's an AI phone companion service where an AI agent checks in on the elderly and alerts welfare services in any case of distress. Mr. Beck is 78 years old. Someone calls him to ask if he slept well and is eating his meals. It's as if it's his granddaughter calling to check in on him. <laughs> on the other end of the phone is actually an artificial intelligence companion. And the two have a conversation like this once a week. I feel like if this develops further, it could really be another friend. Gyeonggi-do province has started this elderly companion service for seniors who live alone. The generative AI companion uses large-scale language models like ChatGPT to make deeper, more involved conversations possible. I didn't know it was a robot calling. It's comforting to get a call like that. During these conversations, if there are any distress signals like expressions of depression, loneliness or difficulty living, the AI detects the situation as a sign of crisis and alerts the emergency welfare call center, prompting a real person to check in. Also, in the event of three attempts of unanswered calls, welfare service staff step in to make direct contact. Should those calls also be unanswered, welfare service representatives from local municipalities will visit the residents. The elderly population in Gyeonggi-do province is surpassing 2 million. Every year, this number increases by at least 200,000. It's difficult to keep up with a personalized care service. In this day of a rapidly aging population, demand for such personalized care services is growing, which has brought great attention to the capabilities of such AI companion services. Moving on to dual crisis hit Florida. A man who shot dead three people in a racially motivated attack in Florida wrote off his hatred of black people. 21-year-old Ryan Christopher Palmeter fired 11 rounds at one woman sitting in her car in Jacksonville before entering a shop and shooting another two people. The Office of the Medical Examiner has positively identified the shooter as Ryan Christopher Palmeter. The shooter was 21 years of age when he committed yesterday's atrocities. Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters on Sunday said Ryan Palmetter, the white gunman who fatally shot three black people at a Dollar General store a day earlier, bought his guns legally and had no criminal history. Police say he died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Waters and other authorities have described the shooting as racially motivated, saying the man had authored several manifestos for media, his parents, whom he lived with, and law enforcement, detailing his hatred for black people. The manifesto is, is, a, is quite frankly, uh, the diary of a madman. Um, he was, he was, I mean, he was just completely irrational. Um, but with his irrational, with his irrational thoughts, he knew what he was doing. He had 100%. He was 100% lucid. Waters said that Palmetter was briefly held in 2017 during a mental health crisis could not immediately reach members of the gunman's family for comment. Waters told reporters the gunman killed 52-year-old Angela Carr, 19-year-old Anolt Laguerre, and 29-year-old Gerald Gallion. Police say Palmetter wore a tactical vest and his face was covered by a mask, and that he carried a handgun and an AR-15-style rifle, which had swastikas on it. Authorities say he was spotted trying to enter a historically black college, Edward Waters University, on Saturday before he headed to the Dollar General store. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said Sunday the state would work with the school to ensure it had adequate security. Florida, the state, and its people condemn the horrific racially motivated murders perpetrated by a deranged scumbag 
uh, in Jacksonville at the Dollar General store. Uh, perpetrating violence of this kind is unacceptable, and targeting people due to their race has no place in the state of Florida. In a statement on Sunday, President Joe Biden noted the shooting occurred the same day the country marked the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington, scene of Martin Luther King Jr.'s famous I Have a Dream speech. The president said, quote, we must refuse to live in a country where black families going to the store or black students going to school live in fear of being gunned down because of the color of their skin. The Justice Department said it's investigating the shooting as a hate crime and an act of racially motivated violent extremism. Moving on to the U.S. election updates now. Even if Donald Trump doesn't win the GOP presidential nomination, President Joe Biden's team expects to confront the former president's policies in the race for the White House. According to polling from 538, Trump currently holds nearly a 40-point lead over his closest opponent in the crowded GOP primary. But his legal troubles could sideline the former president during the 2024 campaign as he faces dozens of charges across four indictments. Regardless, during the first Republican presidential debate, many candidates seemed to embrace policies popularized by Trump, particularly with regard to climate change and the U.S. border with Mexico. Biden faces his own primary challenges among Democrats from Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Marianne Williamson, but he holds a more than 50-point lead over them. Spanish Soccer Federation President Luis Rubelier's unwanted kiss on women's World Cup winner Jenny Hermoso has triggered a crisis in Spanish soccer, with world governing body FIFA suspending the president and Spain's women coaches resigning en masse. The moment now known as Kissgate, a story that's getting uglier by the day. The conduct of this man, Football Federation Chief Luis Rubiales, after Spain won the World Cup, is under intense scrutiny. The achievement of the women's team reaching the pinnacle of the sport now overshadowed. Events snowballing in a week. The organization's president originally apologized, first for grabbing his crotch in the royal box when the match finished, then for kissing the striker Jenny Amoso on the lips, claiming it was consensual. In the midst of celebrating, Jenny issued a statement saying it wasn't and was unacceptable. Calls for him to resign grew, and Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez stepped in, saying the apology wasn't enough. Tanto lo que están dominado, then, at an extraordinary summit for the organization, Mr. Rubiales claimed he was the victim of social assassination, false feminism, and that he'd asked for a little peck, and Jenny agreed. On resigning, well, I'm going to tell you something. I'll not resign. I'll not resign. I'll not resign. Hours later, this indignant response from the women's leading all-time goalscorer. I felt vulnerable and the victim of an impulsive, sexist, out-of-place act and without any consent on my part. The whole of Spain's women's team are now refusing to play unless Rubiales resigns. It's triggered protests on the Federation's doorstep too, but the organization is now threatening to sue Jenny Amoso, claiming she is lying. The Spanish Football Association will show that these are lies that are being spread, either by someone on behalf of the player or, if applicable, by the player herself. Despite support from football's national body, in the latest extraordinary twist, the world's governing body, FIFA, has now announced it's suspending Luis Rubiales for 90 days as he faces disciplinary action. Government ministers have even described it as football's Me Too moment, with male behaviour now under the spotlight. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. 
Terry Goh, the billionaire founder of major Apple supplier Foxconn, confirmed that he was entering the race to be Taiwan's next president as an independent candidate in the 2024 elections. Drone footage shows the aftermath of a devastating twin explosion at a Romanian gas station that killed at least one person and injured 57 others. Archaeologists in northern Peru have unearthed a 3,000-year-old tomb, which they believe might have honored an elite religious leader in the Andean country some three millennia ago. Following a series of delays and security issues, Indonesia's high-speed rail line, or LRT, was launched. The project was originally set to be completed by 2019 but has been beset by problems. Heavy rains and strong winds swept across parts of the Balearic Islands including Mallorca and Catalonia in northeastern Spain and a small number of people were reportedly injured during weather-related incidents. That is all we have for you on World News Tonight. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight in Buenos Aires, where the World Tango Championship saw talented couples from across the globe grace their stage. Thank you for watching. Good night.